Well, once again, we find ourselves in a parking lot on a Thursday. Usually we are in uh, Trader Joe's parking lot on Thursday morning, but we're running a little late uh, today. So the sh show is starting a, just a tad early this morning. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue just uh, uh, for a few short pages in uh, uh, the Crowley classic Magic Without Tears. Now, I held up a pretty rare uh, hardback uh, edition that was published by uh, 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 Falcon, New Falcon Press, uh, uh, a number of years ago. And uh, I mentioned that uh, Magic Without Tears is, is currently uh, out of print and, uh, and sort of difficult to get. But I forgot, it is on Kindle, okay? And uh, this morning, for the convenience of being in the car, I'm actually going to uh, uh, read the part that uh, uh, I'm going to read for you today from my Kindle. Uh, but uh, what I'm holding up here is um, now my hand-drawn uh, book cover. I defaced the book cover of an old Castle uh, publishing edition of uh, uh, Magic and Theory and Practice. Now, I got this uh, probably in 1971 or 72. I bought it at Gilbert's Bookstore in Hollywood. And it was used then. It was a used book. Here's my, I don't, you probably can't see that, um, but I got my, my Adio Sat Benny uh, OTO stamp in it. But it says it was uh, $5.98 marked down from uh, uh, $10. Okay, this is a special book for me, and I've had it ever since then, over 50 years. And uh, uh, I've got all of my marginal notes and, and outlines and, and things, uh, and notes, marginal notes and everything, everything I, I needed to do uh, to uh, organize my material for the Magic of Aleister Crowley uh, book. And also later on for the for for other books, and for all the years we taught um, uh, Monday Night Magic class, uh, taught out of this book, and it fell apart. It just c completely fell apart. Oh, uh, many many years ago, Rodney Orpheus and Carolyn Tilly and and uh, a bunch of us uh, OTO people went to Disneyland. And Rodney Orpheus took this uh, this picture of me in the in the gift shop with Mickey Mouse ears, and I uh, on the back cover I put it uh, in a star of Babel. <laughs> anyway, can you imagine how precious this book is uh, to me? And it was completely just falling of pages, dropping off the uh, covers, completely torn off. And a good Facebook friend, Michael Reed, uh, said, look, send it to me. I'll, I'll rebind it. <laughs> I'll rebind it. I feel sorry for you. I'll rebind it. So I did send it to him. And, and he, is, he has rebound it without disturbing the, the patina <laughs> of 50 years of, of, of magical uh, uh, pawing through, and it's got a beautiful hard spine now, and uh, I'm I'm slowly sort of breaking it in because I want it to last another 50 or 60 years. But anyway, thank you, Michael Reed, for for that. Okay, now Constance usually doesn't spend too much time in Trader Joe's on Thursdays, so I don't know how much time I'm going to have um, uh, to. Uh, read to you today from my Kindle version of uh, Magic Without Tears. Uh, but I, re I read uh, letter A and letter B at the very sort of introductory pages of this. Uh, 
And uh, well, I didn't read all of letter B. He did sort of a uh, digression that uh, I didn't want to uh, uh, actually get into yesterday. But I want to read at least a very um, uh, important section of his letter C. Now, these are the first three letters he sent back to a, a, a woman disciple just four years before he died in uh, 1943. Uh, so here is, oh, I got to get back in here. I hope my Kindle isn't running low. Actually, if you can't find a theory in practice and you don't have a Kindle, it's worth getting a Kindle for, for um, excuse me, Magic Without Tears. I'll say it right out. Okay. Uh, anyway, here's the letter C. Now he's... Um, uh, he's corresponding with her. Uh, he's uh, 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 talking about her joining the OTO, talking about her uh, joining the AA. Um, but right now she's just a student of Aleister Crowley, and he's telling her about this stuff. So this is insight on what the OTO is and what the OTO isn't and what the AA is and what the OTO AA isn't in 1943. Now we see all sorts of wonderful uh, uh, AA work going on all over the world. We see the the OTO is a as a, a, a the largest magical occult order in the world. Um, but in 1943, it was pretty much all in Alistair Crowley's head with the exception of the work that was going on in Southern California. Letter number C, April 30th, 1943. Kara Soror, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Thank you for your long letter of no date, but received two days ago. I'm very sorry you're still feeling exhausted. I'm not too good myself, for I find this weather very tiring. I will answer your various points as best I can. I'm arranging to send you the official papers connected with the OTO. But the idea that you should meet other members is quite impossible. I'm not sure how many other members there were for her to meet in those days. But this is sort of, sort of important. Even after affiliation, and affiliation in those days, which he mentioned in, in uh, uh, the letter I wrote, I read to you yesterday, uh, is more or less Crowley just sitting down and reading you through the degree ceremony. There wasn't lodges to give you that initiatory experience. There weren't other lodge officers. There were rituals, scripts, and Crowley would read you through those scripts. I'm arranging to send you the official papers connected to the OTO, but the idea that you should meet other members is quite impossible. Even after your affiliation, you would not meet anyone unless it were necessary for you to work in cooperation with them. I'm afraid you have still got the idea that the great work is a tea party. Contact with other students only means that you criticize their hats, then their morals. And I'm not going to encourage that. Your work is not anybody else's, and undirected chatter is the worst poisonous element in human society. Now, as much as we appreciate many of the the advantages and, and uh, 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 
attributes of the internet. I'm even talking to you on Facebook as much as we we appreciate and now depend on that. This is the drawback. Your work is not anyone else, anybody else's and undirected chatter is the worst poisonous element in human society. When you talk of the and I guess she wrote um, uh, to him a question concerning the, the actual history of Jesus Christ. Okay, we're, we're assuming that from his, his words here. When you talk about the, quote, actual record of the being called Jesus Christ, I don't know what you mean. I am not aware of the existence of any such record. I know a great many legends, most borrowed from previous legends of a simi similar character. Isn't this great? <laughs> it would be better for you to get a copy of the Equinox of the Gods and study it. The great work is the uniting of opposites. It may mean the uniting of the soul with God, of the microcosm with the macrocosm, of the female with the male, of the ego with the non-ego, or what not. By love under will, one refers to the fact that the method in every case is love. May I repeat that? By love under will, one refers to the fact that the method in every case is love by which is meant the uniting of opposites, as above stated, such as hydrogen and chlorine, sodium and oxygen, and so on. Any reaction, whatever, any phenomenon, is a phenomenon of love. As you will understand when I come to explain to you the meaning of the word, quote, point event, unquote. But love has to be under will if it is to be properly directed. You must, excuse me. You must first find your true will and make all your actions subservient to that one great purpose. Rahur is the sun god. Tahuti is the Egyptian Mercury. Kephra is the sun at midnight. She's, she's uh, obviously uh, asking about uh, details of Resh. And those are the, the gods. Uh, about your problems, what have I to do? What have I to do is to try to teach you to think clearly. You will be immensely stimulated by having all the useless trimmings stripped from your thinking apparatus. For instance, I don't think you know the first principle of logic. You apparently take up more or less, a uh, more or less Christian attitude, but at the same time, you like very much the idea of karma. You cannot have both. The question about money does not arise. This is an old and very good rule, which I've always kept was really pertinent to the time when there were actual secrets. Okay, this is uh, about to not selling secrets and stuff. But I have published openly all the secrets. All I can do is train you in perfectly exoteric way. My suggestion about a weekly letter was intended to exclude this question, as you'd be getting full commercial value for anything paid. Now, I'm I'm not sure that, that there was a, a donation going on between her and Crowley, but uh, uh, I think he's uh, addressing that issue. Your questions about the, quote, spirit of the sun and so on are to be answered by experience. Intellectual satisfaction is worthless. I have to bring you to a state of mind completely superior to the mechanism of the normal mind. 
well I'm going to mark that spot right there and um, that's where we'll pick up tomorrow because this is a very very good letter and as you've heard Constance is through shopping and uh, I'm going to have to get back home because I got a day day of writing to do. So, oh, she looks. Can I? What's that? You're going. I'm. I'm through. Okay. Here she. Here she comes. I'm going to walk over to East Highway and have anything to get. But no, uh, I'm through now. <laughs>